Chrysler produced their first Super Braid back in 1990 when I was just seven years old, and that was the Silkworm. It's a nice supple braid. At the time when it came out, it was a bit of a one of a kind, you know, it's really, really fine and supple compared to any other of the braids that have been around before that. Um, it's got a neutral buoyancy, uh, basically the idea being that it makes your bait act as natural as possible, you know, so there's no stiffness hindering that movement. Um, just to prove that to you, if I take a piece, if I put this in the water, you see the ends there are falling down and then you've got this looped up bit here and that is basically as close as you're going to get to a neutral buoyancy. So yeah, what that does is basically enables your bait to act like a freebie. So, you know, it'll move about, if the fish sucks it up, it'll come up nice and easily, you know, you haven't got any stiff bits or hinge bits or anything like that. So, um, you know, it really does catch the fish out. I've got a rig here that I tied up earlier, just a plain and simple one, hook on one end, swivel on the other, and I'll drop that into the tank. You'll see that it still loops up. Now, I know a lot of anglers that use that sort of presentation with a lot of confidence because you've sort of got that movement there. If the fish sucks the bait, where that loop is, it enables the bait to sort of fly back into the fish's mouth and sort of catch them unaware. But I know a lot of people that wouldn't be happy with that because obviously the braid's sitting up and um, could potentially spook the carp. Real simple one, another one of Chryston's products, drop them. Now it's a putty, it's got a sort of bit of a, a waxy feel to it. And it's designed to make your braid sink. There's a couple of different ways of applying it. Simplest way is just to get your hook link and just rub a little bit into it. Like right, so. You see the braid, it sort of almost colours the braid a bit. drop that in. You can see it just leans over and sinks. Absolutely lovely. So like I say, that was the one way of applying the drop em. The other way is just to take a tiny little pinch off, like a little mouse drop in, and just sort of wrap that round it. Going back to the braids, another one I do, Super Silk. Again, used to use this a lot. What we found this one was great for was uh, sort of long supple hook links, but obviously you see the colour there, it's white. Most people wouldn't want to use a white hook link, nor would I to be honest with you. So what we used to do is have a little range of pens, so different colours to suit whatever lake bed we're fishing on. You know, if you're fishing sand, it'd be a nice like sandy colour one. Fishing silt, it'd be a dark one, etc., etc. So brilliant hook link to have, um, so that you can fish a different range of different lake beds and just blend it in to whatever you are fishing on. Another thing worth mentioning about the Super Silk is it's tight weave, really abrasion resistant. So it's great if you're fishing up against snags or weed or anything like that. Since then, they've developed some other braids. They've done two sinking versions now. The Merlin, so this is an old favourite of many anglers. Got a green weave in it. Really supple, sinks nicely. Great for, you know, if you're fishing solid bags or just long supple hook links. And the other one, which is one of my favourites, I use this one a lot, is the Supernova. Again, it is a sinking one, but this one to me has got to be the most supple hook length on the market. If you just run it across your finger, you just can't feel it's there, you know. It's got such a supple, soft makeup, and I think that's where it comes into its own, you know. It goes into the fish's mouth and they just can't feel it. Um, the bait's acting naturally, they move off, it, the hook link tightens, and they're hooked. Job done. I know Daryl Peck used this stuff for absolutely years, um, all over the country, caught loads of 40s on it. Um, I used to do my head in a bit because I used to look at his rigs and think, how can you cast it out without it angling? Because he just uses single hook baits, you know. I'm a bit of a bag man, just uh, for that confidence of it not tangling. But yeah, Daryl used to use this all the time, just a just a single hook bait on its own like that. And again, it must have quite, it must have always sort of been, the bait must be falling by the lead. So he probably did have that movement going back to what we were talking about earlier. But yeah, another fantastic use for it is for combi rigs. Been using it a lot recently, combining um, a bit of fluorocarbon with a small amount of that supernova on there. As you can see, inch and a half of soft there to just to let that hook do its job. I use that for a variety of different rigs, pop-ups, bottom baits, balance baits. Uh, it's been brilliant to me. Real simple little knot tie there, and it's nice and neat too. Great stuff. One of their more extreme hook links, the Quicksilver. Now this stuff. I think it was originally designed as you know abrasion resistant snag and shock leader, um, but what a lot of people have ended up doing is using it for hook links when fishing abroad. 
pretty sure that Lockie had the uh, rainbow biggin on this stuff. It's really, really tightly woven, so you can imagine it, well, don't need to imagine it, you know, it's been proved many times. This stuff is awesome in snaggy situations. And see, it's got a nice sort of browny colour. Um, it's available in 25, 35 and 45 pound, that one. I mean, to me, it looks like rope, but obviously places such as Rainbow or on the river in the Ebro, you know, in real demanding conditions, it is required and it does the job brilliantly. As I say, Chrysler have been specialising in hook links for years now, so it's a brand you know you can rely on.